This video is going to talk about these three male reproductive models and we're going to start with this one right here because I think it's the simplest one and it's a good starting point. So when we look at this one first it should be hopefully obvious that this large vestibule up here is the bladder and the leading out of the bladder you have urethra, the urethra which is named in three particular segments. There's the prostatic urethra that travels through the prostate the membranous urethra that travels through the urogenital diaphragm, and then the spongy urethra that travels the rest of the way out of the body. The spongy urethra gets its name because it travels through a region of the penis called the corpus spongiosum, right here. And so whenever you're trying to find the corpus spongiosum, all you really need to do is look for where the urethra is. And remember that urethra is just named after that corpus spongiosum. So they call it, that region of the urethra is called the spongy urethra. The other component of the hydrostatic skeleton of the penis is right up here. Corpora cavernosa. It does not have the urethra traveling through it. And in a sagittal section, it, it will normally appear to be the smaller portion of the hydrostatic skeleton. In reality, if this were a, different, a transverse section or something like that, this would be much larger. But what we're looking at in all of these videos and on all of your models are going to be a sagittal section, so this will actually appear smaller. Around the outside of the penis, this particular model does still have the foreskin or prepis attached. And if we take a look a little bit closer at the testes here, there's a few things you can see. You can see the testis here, you can see sort of the epididymis indicated by number four here. It's not represented very clearly. Number five up here is representing this strip of muscle and this muscle actually continues up through the spermatic cord so that would be the cremaster muscle. And the dartos muscle, the other muscle of the scrotum, which is just below the skin, is represented by these little fragmented uh, kind of orange-brown painting. So this is a very, very thin layer of muscle here just below the skin. What else do we have? So if we look up here, we can look back at the prostate here. We already went over the prostatic urethra. The one other duct that travels through the prostate is called the ejaculatory duct. And this is the very last segment really just after the vas deferens. Also, number 11 here, this little faint circle is representing the bulba urethral gland. Number 10 here is going to be the bulb of the penis. So that's part of the corpus spongiosum, but it's the part actually really within the body and just, just inferior to this urogenital diaphragm. Males also have this nice pubic symphysis, which we saw in the female. And that's pretty much it for this model. So as we move on to this guy over here, we get a little bit more three-dimensional and there's a little bit more going on. And so I'll just point out some of the differences. Uh, this model specifically contains um, a, the spermatic cord. So this is a nice one. You can see where it actually travels. It has arteries and veins that travel through it. Uh, that terminates at the body of the epididymis down here. Um, what you can also see now, we don't have a sagittal section bladder. The bladder itself is intact. And so you can see the seminal vesicle on the posterior side of the bladder. You can see the ureter right here that's coming down from the kidney. You also see it up here. And then you see the vas deferens, which comes around from the posterior side, or actually comes around from the spermatic cord, travels around the bladder, meets up with that seminal vesicle, and eventually empties into the ejaculatory duct, which we saw in the previous model. And that's pretty much the only thing that stands out really differently on this particular model. Good for the spermatic cord, really. And then this last one is this giant, rather aged model, but it shows uh, it shows actually a lot. This one has a lot of information on it because it shows the bladder cross section like we saw before, but it also shows the entire uh, pathway of the vas deferens traveling around, meeting up with the seminal vesicle. After those two converge, it turns into the ejaculatory duct here, which then empties into the prostatic urethra. Still has the bulbal urethra glands there, even shows a little duct 
connecting it to the spongy urethra. Uh, everything else is pretty similar. You don't see those either of those two muscular layers of the testes or of the scrotum. Those aren't shown here. Let's see, I think that that is pretty much it. All right.